you standing and open your Bible to Psalm 127. Psalm 127. I'm, I'm so excited by what the Lord is doing in this series already. In Psalm 127, if you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say wait a minute. Amen. All righty. Online, let us know where you're at. Psalm 127 and the first verse I'll read down, it's only five verses. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Look at somebody real quick, smile at them. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Our, families our families need a firm foundation. A firm foundation. Amen, amen, amen. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord today. I need just a little bit of grace to get the plane off the runaway. I want to tag this text, and with the help of the Lord and with your amens, I want to preach about a firm family foundation. I'm going to say some things that may be a little bit like pulling teeth, but if you lean in with me, I think we're going to see the value. The family is essential because the society as we know it depends on the home. As a matter of fact, I would argue with anyone that the most significant institution to us is the family. Pastor, that sounds strange coming from a preacher of the gospel. Are you suggesting that the church is not more important than the family? Are you suggesting that government those are the three God-ordained institutions are not more important than the family. No, I would suggest that the most important institution to God and to us is the family. Maybe I need to remind all of us that God made families before he made churches. The family is the basic unit of society. The family, everybody shout the family. Uh, the, the family undergirds everything that happens in our society. And if there is any influence that weakens the family, if there is any influence that makes it difficult for the family to do the job that the family needs to do, that influence also weakens our society. And I would argue that everything that is done to build strong, to build healthy, to build happy, and to build effective families will increase the possibility of a strong and healthy society. I'll park here. I hadn't planned on it. But I want to remind us, y'all, some of y'all grew up with a lot. I, I didn't grow up with a lot. Um, I didn't grow up with a lot of material things. Um, I didn't grow up getting the latest sneakers. Weren't, they weren't dunks back then. I didn't, I didn't grow up getting the newest pro kids. I, I didn't grow up getting the newest Stan Smiths. I, I didn't grow up getting any of the new stuff. I, I didn't grow up with my mom and dad shopping at fancy places. We didn't grow up having a lot of fancy meals. It was a whole lot of rice. We, 
We didn't have a car most of the time. And so we took public transportation to most places we went. We walked to church on Sunday morning, those six or seven blocks to get to the church and walk back home. We would pass the winos with their, their 40s in a paper bag, throwing their head back and telling us to pray for them. We, we would walk past the guys drinking the tailor's port, aging myself a little bit. But even though without all of the trappings of fancy stuff, we kind of grew up all right because we had something that the world could not offer us and it was inside the home. Inside the home, there was some love. Inside the home, there was proper discipline. I wish I had a handful of people that could testify that, that you don't always need all of the stuff. What you really need are people in your home that are for you, people in your home that will develop you, people in your home that see stuff in you, people in your home that love you enough to correct you when you're wrong. And then you need people down the street from your home, mama and them, that when you're not quite right, they correct you for your parents. I'm trying to get you to see that everything starts in the home. Psalm 127 is a different psalm of degree. It is a different psalm of ascent. I told you last Sunday, this is the prayer list of the Old Testament. You know, same like, you know, me and my kids, when we would go on our trips when they were growing up, we kept a John legend running on playlist. And we would drive from Philadelphia to Florida, wherever, we knew every song on the playlist. And some of you, as you travel around, you have your favorite playlist, them songs you like to put on repeat. Well, for the children of Israel, the psalms on the songs on the playlist were the psalms of ascent, psalms of degrees. As they traveled to their various feasts, they would sing these same 15 songs. And it's interesting to me that right in the middle of these 15 psalms is a psalm of ascent that talks about the family. This psalm is different because most of the psalms of ascent say psalms of ascent, and then some, I believe it's about four of them, say psalms of David. But this particular one says a psalm of ascent or a psalm of degree for Solomon. And Solomon is the son of David. Solomon is the one that his, 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 his institution is characterized, his administration is characterized by God giving him the ability and the mandate and the call to build the temple. So S Solomon knew something about building houses. And what he's teaching us, y'all, is that the family is still central to everything that God wants to do. Amen, somebody. Y'all, Solomon knew what many of us know. When you're building anything, it's arduous work. Is there anyone in church that knows that building a good family is work? Do, do I have any business owners? Where are my business people that will testify that building a business is not easy? It does not just happen because you have a good idea. It requires financial sacrifice and long hours. Where are my folk in the room that understand that building children to make an impact on our society is not easy? Where are my people that could testify that building a strong marriage is not easy? Where are my people that could testify that building a life that honors God is not easy, that in order for me to get where God wants me to be, it is not automatically going to work. I'm going to say that again. Things don't automatically work. You got to grind your way and work your way. And what Solomon is saying to us today through this Psalm of Ascent is that if I'm going to have anything that is lasting, I have to have a firm family foundation. And I want to minister to this because we are slick today. What do you mean, Pastor, we can get slick? We can allow other things to take priority and precedent over our families. That we can just because I'm in church and just because I love God does not give us a pass on the conditions of our home and what God does inside of our families. That God is teaching us that my family is still central to everything that goes on. You want to make Rocky Mount, Tarboro, Wilson better places? 
We don't really need different city council and county commissioners to make things better. That helps. No, what would help even more is if our cities were comprised of strong, solid families. It, 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 I might have a few educators that's going to say amen. But, but see, I understand that we severely underfund public education. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not excusing the General Assembly for that. But there is a shift. Not, not only is the shift how we have severely underfunded schools, but there's a shift away from parents to schools. See, I grew up in a culture where my mom and daddy felt like it was their responsibility to make sure I knew how to read. It was their responsibility, I don't have help, but that's all right, to make sure I got to school on time. It was their responsibility to make sure I knew one and one was two. See, what happens at church and what happens at school should just supplement what is happening at home. And at the end of the day, if we want our children stronger and our families better, it's got to happen at home. Tell somebody it's got to happen at home. And, I, and so there's got to be a firm foundation. Y'all, let me park here for a moment. Y'all going to help me preach today whether y'all want to or not. See, the only reason we have young people cussing teachers out is because they learn cussing at home. It's amazing to me that parents will act all embarrassed. Oh, I don't know where he got that from, girl. I don't know where he, he got it from you, mama. He got it from you when you were cussing his daddy out because he wasn't paying child support. And at the end of the day, Tell somebody it starts at home. <laughs> and, and, and so I'm trying to, I'm preaching today about a firm family foundation. The Psalm of Ascent teaches us what the family foundation should look like. It is four parts. Number one, the first part of this firm family foundation is that you and I have to understand the construction. Everyone say the construction of my family. He says in Psalm 127 verse 1, unless the Lord builds, everybody say unless. That would suggest to you that sometimes I have someone other than the Lord building the house. Because he would not say unless the Lord builds the house. So he's saying that I could allow my house to be built on something other than God. But if I'm going to have a firm family foundation, I've got to make sure that my house is constructed by the right builder. I don't know if any of y'all ever, any of y'all you bought a house only to find out that the builder of that house did not necessarily use the best materials. I don't know if you've ever came into somebody's house and you built the house. But see, here's the thing. You don't, you don't know what the builder put behind that wall. And so it's important to have the right builder that builds our house. I want to park here for a moment. Because Solomon, because he built the temple, he built the temple with the best general contractor that existed at his time. It was a man by the name of Haram. He was a capable contractor. If we are going to build our families, it's important to have the right general, unless the Lord builds the house. It is not by accident that Jesus was a carpenter when he lived on earth. Jesus is involved today with three specific building projects. First building project that Jesus is constructing is that Jesus is constructing a place for my future. It, it, everybody say, it's heaven. I, I want to park here for a moment, y'all. I'm going to be anti-culture with this. But I don't care what other places that people tell you. My Bible says, no man comes to the Father except by him. And at the end of the day, if I want to have a place for my future, I can't rely on a horoscope to get me my future. I can't rely on no crystals to get me my future. I can't rely on no incense to get me my future. I can't rely on no fancy stones. I'm not scared of y'all in here today to get me my future. At the end of the day, I can't rely on no idols. I can't rely on people. At the end of the day, I got to rely on Christ and Christ alone to get me my future. And so we got to be clear that he's building a place, first of all, for my future. Because at the end of the day, 100% of us are leaving here. And when we get here, we need to have a home to go to. Jesus is building a place for my future. But get this, Jesus is building a place for my faith. Everybody shout, that's the church. 
He's, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In a minute, I'm going to give you opportunity to get saved. I'm going to give you opportunity to join the church. I want everybody to hear me and hear me well. All of our families need a family. The Gallier family does not have it put well enough together to be able to execute this life all by ourselves without having some other families that know how to pray, some other families that know how to encourage, some other families that know how to keep us on the straight track. Is there anybody in church that recognizes, I need some help on this way. I need some help people guiding me. I need some help people talking to me. Tell your neighbor, your family needs a family. And so that's why we go to church. We go to church because I need another family to pat me on my back and tell me it's going to be all right. I need to look at another man that goes through a moment of hardship and know that I'm not the only one. You need another woman in your life that can guide you and direct you in being a better wife or a better mother. You need somebody with some money in the bank that knows how to manage their finances. Is there anybody here that when the bottom falls out, I can't do this thing by myself? I need a family. I need a family that's not going to run me away when I'm honest about my struggle. I need a family that's not going to tell my business in the street because I confided in them. I need a family that can help me lift my hands when I can't lift my own hands. Every family needs a family. So Jesus is building a home for my future. It's called heaven. He's building a home for my faith. It's called the church. And now he's building a home for my family, which is your address. And in order for him to construct my family, he must be the builder. Let me say something else. Not only must he be the builder, I must have the right foundation. Because if I build on sand... I'm learning about foundations. This building has taught us a lot about foundations. You know, evidently it was very swampy here when Home Depot bought this land and built this building. And they tell me they had to bring in truckloads upon truckloads upon truckloads of dirt just so they could get compacted enough to put a building on it. But we got evidence that the foundation don't always hold like you want it to. So if you go out in our lobby and you see the splintering, the buckling up of some of the water coming through where that beautiful fancy floor we put down where water is starting to work its way through it, it's because if you don't have the right foundation, eventually the things that you go through are gonna start to show up. But you need the right foundation in Jesus. Somebody shout, in Jesus. See, when I get the foundation in Jesus, it helps me bear the weight. It helps me despite... See, some of the things that take us out are not the things we see. It's the things that pop up underneath the surface that we didn't even know was a real thing. But when my life and my family is built on Jesus, the storms come. The winds blow. The difficulties of my life happen. I get a diagnosis. People betray my life. I get abandoned along the way. And folk will look at me and you're still standing straight on your feet. Have you ever had folk look at you and say, how in the world are you still worshiping after what you've been through? How in the world have you been able to stand up when life was pushing you down? How in the world? Look at your neighbor and say, how in the world? Can you keep serving when people don't want to be grateful? How in the world? Can you love on people that don't want to return the favor? My life is built on, on Christ. The solid rock we stand, all of the ground. Tell your neighbor you got to have the right foundation. Because see, the right foundation, this, this is what you don't know. This is what you don't know. I, don't, don't get offended, don't get offended, don't get offended, don't get offended, because I'm not just talking about you unless I'm talking about you. But anyway, don't get offended. But, 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 but members will oftentimes come and, and their pastor pray for me. Um, 
I think I'm gonna have to get my hip replaced, pay for me. I'm gonna have to get my knee replaced. You know, I'm having a hard time. And, and, and usually, it's not always the case. Sometimes they've got, you know, some medical things going on. But a lot of times, this is what I say to them. I say, well, listen, why don't you do this? Um, I'm gonna pray for you. How about if we try to get some weight off them knees? Okay. I, it, it might be possible that you put more on them than they were designed to be able to bear. Y'all not talking, but that's all right. Because I tell them, when you get the surgery, all it's going to do is make you lose weight anyway. So maybe if you get the weight off you, preach Pastor James Gay that your knees and hips can handle the weight. See, when Jesus is your foundation, you don't know what weight is coming on your life. Cancer may weigh you down. People may weigh you down. See, I'm good on these knees and hips right now, but if William were to jump on my shoulders right now, I might be able to preach a minute. Don't you do it, don't you do it, don't you do it. I might be able to preach a minute, but after a while, the weight, that I never expected to be able to carry will start weighing me down so I can't do what God is calling me to do. But when your life is built on Jesus, the storms may come, the weights may come, the disappointment may come, where my folk in here would wait. The lies may come, the hardships may come, but I'm still standing because on Christ I'm built. Now two people tell them I'm still standing. You gotta have the right foundation. Preach Pastor James Gale, yeah. You, you, you can't, you can't. My foundation can't be culture. Cause what's in today gonna be gone tomorrow. Y'all not talking. I wasn't saying nothing about artificial intelligence when I was preaching 19 years ago. 19 years ago, we ain't had nobody on TikTok. 19 years ago, we ain't had no Instagram channel. Y'all not talking. 19 years ago, we had MySpace. Somebody look at my who? That's my point exactly. If your life is built on culture, culture gonna come and go. But the God I serve, sometimes he's in culture. Sometimes he's out of culture, but 100% of the time, he's above my culture. And so my foundation is not in tradition. My foundation is not in culture. My foundation is not in anything but Christ. It's the construction of my family. My family has to be constructed on Christ. He's got to be my contractor and he's got to be my foundation. Say amen if y'all still following me. Yo, I'm, I'm still in verse 1. He, I mean, what time is it? Okay, I got, I got 10 minutes. Uh, uh, so first of all, everybody say, the construction of my family. I, I need you to get it. In a minute, you're going to have an opportunity to get saved and join the church. Come on, I know you got a good job. I know that job brought you here. I know you got good health right now. I know y'all are happy right now. I know things are good in your life right now. But things come and go, and people come and go, and jobs come and go, and money money come where are my folk in here that know it's going to rain one day come on tell your neighbor it's going to rain one day every day won't be sunny every day won't be up every day won't be my way every day won't be like I like it every day won't be like I want it's going to rain one day and when it rains I need you to get this my foundation is going to get exposed See, that's the funny thing about foundations. Don't nobody pay attention to them. Yeah, yeah, we look at a brick house. And then the house looks fine. But then you kind of look up. And you see this crack. You see one of the windows going sideways. You don't have a brick problem. You don't have a window problem. I have a foundation problem. So in order, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So in order, see, what I can't do 
it's just, it's just caulk and cement the brick. Because all I'm doing, I hear your Holy Ghost. All I'm doing is masquerading the real problem. So a whole lot of us, we look good, but deep down beneath the surface, I'm really falling apart. I got to ignore where I'm cracking. I got to get up under the house, jack it up, and get myself on a foundation. Everybody say the construction of my family. Unless the Lord, give them verse 2, y'all. Unless the Lord builds the house. Now my family has to be constructed on Christ. So my kids need to be in church. Because we're, we, we, we got the right constructor. We got the right builder. I'm, I'm going... I'm going to have so many people upset with me, Lenny. Y'all stay close to me. I'm aging myself, and I know sometimes y'all don't want to hear about us old folk older, as I get older. But there's a shift in our culture that's trying to force families to build on the wrong thing. There, 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 was, there wasn't no... I'm going back to when I played basketball growing up, Play football growing up, play softball growing up. What you didn't have was Sunday games. Y'all not talking, but that's all right. Because they would not dare compete with the foundation of the family being church and Christ. But now we live in a culture where families have to choose between giving their children athletic opportunities or competitions and going to church. And then they wind up winning the trophy, but then they wind up losing in life because at the end of the day, I'm not always gonna be able to throw the football. I'm not always gonna be able to dance good. And when a push comes to shove, I need Christ as my foundation. Part of the reason we went to church on Sunday because that's all you could do. Are y'all with me right now? I got a long way to go, so just hang in there for a minute. Number one, I'm going to go through fast because I, I need, I want to deposit something specific in my youth. Number one, the firm family foundation is the construction of the family. Number two, the firm foundation is the conservation of the family. He says now, verse number two, he says, I'm sorry, the, uh, the B portion of verse one, unless, everybody say unless, yes. unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. He, he says, at the end of the day, God is the one that's going to protect what he builds. It, it, at the end of the day, my Glock 43X only can do but so much. Y'all catch that next week. My wife's like, Lord have mercy. But unless the Lord guards the city, unless the Lord is the one watching over, unless the Lord is the one conserving what he did, then at the end of the day, it's still going to be lost. This is what he's saying. You and I are incapable of producing anything eternal without him who is eternal. I can never build something that will last for eternity without the everlasting God. So I can go to my counselor and feel better for the moment. I can get out of Dodge and go to the mountains and feel better for the moment. 
I'm preaching better than I'm getting an amen, but that's all right. I'm not scared of y'all up in here. I'm, I, I'm fully committed to this sermon. You can go in the beach, to the beach, kick the stand, listen to the waves crash. It can be so therapeutic. I'm in such a good place right now. Problem is, I got to come home from the mountain. I got to come home from the beach. Y'all know I'm talking right in here. And if all my life is, is reduced to escapism, I'm not anti going on vacation. We're going to go on. Enjoy yourself. But some of us have no joy, no peace, no tranquility unless we get away. The problem is I'm trying to conserve what I started with my own power. But when the Lord is the one that is guarding my life and guarding my city, then I have the ability. I don't need to escape to feel good. This is what God is saying. He says, I can't, nothing is wrong with building and watching and working. He doesn't condemn that. He says, but we are doing it without God. He says, God is the one that's going to conserve your family. God is the one that I construct my family on. Let me say a third thing, though, is the contentment. Everybody say contentment. The contentment of my family. I'm in verse 3 now. I'm sorry, in verse 2 now. It is vain. Everybody say vain. vain. It is vain for me to rise up early, sit up late, and eat the bread of sorrows. It's a waste for me to stay up all day and night feeling sorry for myself and licking my wounds. This is what he's saying. It is vain for me to stay up all day worried about how I'm going to eat. Mm -mm -mm. He says, I can't live my life like everything depends on me. He says, it's possible that I could still work hard, but my work is faithless because I'm relying on me. Let me, let me bless somebody, Mel. I hope somebody gets this. He says, for he, this is the last sentence of verse 2. For so he gives his beloved sleep. I'm about to, I'm... I'm giving you this word, whether you want it or not. If you don't want it, you better duck, because it's coming your way. You better shut down your ear gate. The Lord is saying, it's time for us to have enough faith in him that I don't let the toils and the concerns and the fears of my life keep me up at night. But at the end of the day, I need to have enough confidence in God that God don't need me to be awake in order for him to move in my life. That God don't need me to be awake in order for me to heal my body. That God don't need me to be awake in order for me to make a way out of nowhere. That God don't need me to be awake. Tell your neighbor, he don't need you to be awake in order for him to fix your marriage. He don't need for you to be awake in order for him to open a door of opportunity. He don't need for you to be awake in order for him to make a way out of nowhere. Is there anybody in church today that could look over your life and could rehearse over your life? Weeping may endure for a night, but I'm going to sleep this night cause joy comes in the morning. Is there anybody here that knows it's going to be all right in the morning? In the morning, it's going to be all right. In the morning, God is going to make a way. I can't. Tell your neighbor, he's giving you sleep. This can I tell you what the Lord is saying? I'm trying to get us out of here, y'all, y'all, y'all. I mean, so this is what he's saying. He's saying, sometimes I don't bless you because you are uncomfortable being vulnerable and being weak. So since you, Jazz, since you won't voluntarily be vulnerable, I'm going to deliberately create an environment that will make you vulnerable and weak a third of every day. 
I, 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 I told the first service the other night for first lady, we got up in the morning, she says, she said, you were exhausted last night. As soon as your p head hit the pillow, you start snoring. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, you should nudge me. You know, I would have, you know, I don't usually snore. I'm sorry. She said, no, no, I just want you to rest. And, 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 and I got to be honest, something hit my spirit. Well, maybe it was just my flesh. She said, it was your flesh. But, but here, here, was, here was what hit me. I was so tired that someone else was more aware of me than I was aware of me. Which means if she wanted to get me. I need y'all, let me come, y'all need to come on and get this word. It don't matter that I'm stronger. It don't matter that I can fight. If you are weak and vulnerable, you need the Lord watching over you to be able to keep you in a place. And this is what I'm trying to get some of y'all to see. Is that God wants you to go to sleep. Let me tell you what we forget to know about God. He can do as much while we are asleep as we can while we're awake. Some of y'all missed it. I'm going to say it again. Let me talk to y'all side of the room. I said he can do as much while you're awake. God can do more in your life when you go to sleep. I'm going to put this over somebody's life. When you wake up, the thing that you were worried about before you went to bed, God would have already taken care of it. Come on, is there anybody ready to receive that? Come on, help me preach for a moment, Word Tabernacle. Look at your neighbor. Tell them the thing that's got you up. Go to sleep. And when you get up, God would have handled it. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm preaching to folk in the room and on the city campus that's ready to say, God, you can have it. Handle my life. Handle my business. Handle my children. God says God can handle it. But my home has got to be a place, I'm almost out of time, home has got to be a place where y'all can go to sleep. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm putting this in your life. I've had to learn this the hard way. Whatever's keeping me up, Either it will or won't be there in the morning. But this is what I know. Whether it's there or not in the morning, I need to be well rested to handle it. Some of y'all too tired to get a blessing. Some of y'all too fatigued in order to hear God. He gives his beloved rest. I'm almost done. I need all my young people getting ready because I got a blessing for y'all. I've got to trust that I serve a God who can do infinitely more in my sleep than I could ever do when I'm awake. Y'all, some of y'all, I need to say it again for my, my B students. I need to trust that I have a God who can do infinitely more in my sleep than I could ever do while I'm awake. I, 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 had, I didn't preach this at the 8 o'clock service. I hear the Lord pushing me now. I want to challenge you on something. I, I got one more point. We're going to be ready to go. Can y'all hang in there with me for just a minute? Y'all good? I want to I give you I want to give you permission to show faith when you go to bed. I want I want you to think about and pray about starting in your prayer time before you go to sleep. Not in that lame. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake up, so not not that prayer. I want you I want you to have enough faith to start doing something like this. Give your, your prayer to God, and I say, and Lord, 
while I'm asleep. If you would work on and then give them your list. Y'all not hearing me yet. Look, it, while I'm asleep, if you would wake somebody up and tell them to help me out. If you, while I'm asleep, y'all not talking right now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help y'all understand. You gotta have a while I'm asleep. Everybody shout while I'm asleep. While I'm asleep, change the heart of my enemy. While I'm asleep, uh, put my name on somebody's address. Put my name on somebody's mind that don't even know me. While I'm asleep, cause the scholarship committee to find my application. While I'm asleep, let me get an approval. While I'm somebody shout while I'm asleep. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. You gonna wake up and you gonna see an email was sent at 4:23 a.m. and it was the Lord working. Or oh, is there anybody in church that's ready to say, God, do it while I'm asleep? Fix my house while I'm asleep. Make a way for my life while I'm asleep. It's gonna be some shouting in here. Because folk gonna be like, when you have time to do that? They're gonna be looking at your life. They're gonna be looking at your life. And they're gonna be like, wait a minute, I know everything you got going on. When you had time to do that application, when you had time to make those phone calls, when you have time to teach your children all of that, it happened while I was asleep. And I'm here to tell somebody, God is about to do something in your life while you throw your head back and say, Lord, do it while I sleep. Come on, act like you mean, Lord, do it while I sleep. You should give him praise like you believe he's going to do it. I can't wait to get home and take my afternoon nap. Because when I wake up from that nap, my life might look all the way different. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. There's got to be enough contentment to go away in my house that I can sleep. I'm going to say it again, there's got to be enough contentment in your house that you can sleep. You got the wrong folk in your house, in your life, if they don't let you sleep. Because that means they don't have the kind of faith you have. You, don't, you, you need to be able to go to sleep without tomorrow being promised. I don't know what it's going to look like. What I do know is God going to do whatever he's going to do. And I'm not God, and he is, so I'm going to get some sleep. <laughs> Unless the Lord builds construction, unless the board, Lord guards conservation. We're almost there. For he gives his beloved sleep, contentment. And then in verse 3, he talks about our children. He gives us, after the contentment of my family, he gives me the children in my family. I got. I don't need. I I I I was careful to word this because I have a big congregation and not everyone are biological parents. So it's a, it's a reason this doesn't say your children. It's the children in my family. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows, this is what I need you to get. Like arrows, that's, that's a reference to what children are like. The word says children are like arrows. They're like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So parents are given the place of warriorship. 
Their children are arrows. The fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies in the gates. I'm going to cut right across the chase on this. Children are arrows to be launched. Our job as parents is to get you ready for war. It, so if my child is like, and the children in our church are like arrows, that means our church and the parents are the bows. My job is to get ready to launch you. My job is to not keep you in my quiver forever. I don't know where I'm, it's, it's quiet in here, but my job is to get you ready to fight. So let me minister just a hot minute. My child will not always be a child. The Bible says arrows are for battles. So our children are going to fight some real battles. And they're going to deal with some real serious issues. So the goal of our parenting is more than survival. It is more than not messing them up. The goal of parenting is that we launch them like an arrow into the world so they can be prepared and ready and that they can represent who you made them into being. So as the parent, as the church, I have to be strong enough as an archer to hold the bow. Which means I can't get weary in well-doing. It means I gotta keep praying for you, I hear you go. It means I gotta keep believing the best for you. It means I gotta hold you together until you are strong enough that I can launch you into where God wants you. And it means I can't I can't launch you into where I want you to go. And I can't make you into what I want you to be. I gotta get you ready for the launch. <sighs> See, these Psalms are written for community worship. Y'all gotta let me teach because we need this as a community. These Psalms are community worship. That means all of us have a part and getting the children ready to be launched. Now, I need you to get this. It doesn't matter how strong the archer is. I need you to get this. It doesn't matter how far I pull back if the arrow is crooked. So my job is to grow the arrow straight. So when I go to launch it, it's not going in a direction other than what God intended for them. See, our children need wings, not strings. I need you to get this. I don't know how many of y'all ever pulled a, a bow and arrow. When you pull that arrow back, there is no string at the end of the arrow. Once you let it go. But what we do is we parent with strings. See, a string is anything that's going to tie my child down. Anything that's going to prevent them from achieving their full potential. Preach Pastor James Gallier. See, see, see. And, and, uh, um, 
strings are anything that doesn't ready them for battle in the real world. I'm going to preach it. I got it because the Lord, gonna, he going to whoop me if I don't. In our efforts, I got something for my young people in a minute because I'm going to give them these essential tools they need. In our effort as parents to be great parents, we wind up inadvertently parenting our children with strings on them. So in my desire to be a good parent, they are fine as long as they're in my home. But I've not equipped them to deal with the battles of the world, so that means I never really prepared them to be launched. So when they cuss the principal out or the teacher out, and you show up and you defend their unacceptable behavior, that's a string. I don't have when you want them to get good grades and you do their homework for them and act like they did the work, that's a string. When your whole life revolves around their schedule, I know y'all mad with me, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to grow us. When you launch them, the universe is not revolving around them. So if their whole life, everybody dropped everything to give them what they need, I've kept a string on them because somebody going to remind them, you ain't the boss of me. Your mama may have done you like that, your dad, but we got to prepare them to be launched. So we wind up creating these unrealistic expectations. And then they get out in the real world. And they're wondering, why am I broke? Because your whole life, your parents taught you that you could have money and not do work. You, I'm, I'm, I'm done, but I'm, let me do this. Let me give you some things. Young people, you need to be launched. Real quick, real quick. I, ain't, I, I, could, I, I could do a whole master class on this. Let me give you a couple things. Number one, number one, um, and these not on your screens. Some of y'all adults need this. Number one, you need character. Everybody say character. Come on, you need character when you get launched. I gotta recognize that my word is the only thing I give away and keep. So I gotta be able to be honest that when I say something, I'm gonna do what I say. It's a statement of character. Let, woo boy, y'all looking, y'all got your arms all full. They look so mad at me. When you say, I will see you at 12 o'clock, and you show up at 12.15, what you have said is, I don't have the character enough to keep my word. And so if I can't trust you to show up on time, how am I going to trust you with a job? How am I going to trust you with keys to the office? How you need character. You got to make sure they have character when they get launched. Number two, they got to be good citizens. That, that, means, that means I don't hang out in places that I don't participate and give stuff back in. It means, it means that I don't show up in spaces and always expect everybody to wait on me and do for me, but I'm a good citizen. I make sure that I bless somebody else and I give to somebody else and I'm doing my part to be able to do, to do stuff in the environment that I'm dwelling in. Number three, write down the word companionship. They have to understand, like we have to understand, that one bad relationship could ruin your life forever. I wish I had, I got some adults that's like, I know he's talking right in here. And you gotta, un so I have to be careful about who I run with, who I'm talking to, who I give my number to, who I'm, 
who I'm, be, who I'm befriending on social media. Write down the word credit. And then right next to it, you need some. They need to know how to handle money. Is, is this on? They need to understand. I'm going to say it again. They know how to handle money. The first thing you need to know about how to handle money is that you got to make some. Hello, somebody. Then they got to learn. I got to invest long term. That I need to spend beneath my means. Y'all. I'm trying to talk to y'all in here. Y'all mean y'all looking at me sideways. I thought you were preparing them for the launch. They gotta understand. A 22% interest rate on a car note is not a good idea. But in order for me to teach them that things, I have to not be modeling it myself. I'm trying to get you to see that they, that we got strings on them and not wings on them. And when they get launched, they wind up struggling because we didn't require certain things of them. Because we didn't understand our role in the family for our children. They need to learn how to be critical thinkers. They need, to learn, they need better do the math when the lights go out and the register's off at McDonald's. They need to know how to get some change back. Close my Bible. They have to understand the importance of communication. They have to understand that when a person asks you a question, mm -mm, it's not an answer. That when, when somebody looks in your face and asks you a question, that when, when you nod your head, they don't know sign language. They're expecting me to communicate. So they have to understand communication. And I'll just say this last thing. They got to know about how to carry themselves. Most of y'all know I, when I wear a baseball cap, I wear my baseball cap on backwards. But when other people signed my paycheck, I didn't. to carry myself in a way that I could still do everything I had to do. Now that I'm in a place where I can do it on my own, I can wear my hat how I want to wear my hat. But when other folk were paying me, I couldn't wear my hat. And some of y'all don't like that because you feel like if I want to show my belly button, that's my business. Problem is, it ain't your, it's your business because somebody else that's seeing that belly button may not want to hire you. And so you got to have enough wisdom to know when to put some stuff in check and how to carry yourself. Boys, I'm trying to get you to see the importance of a firm family foundation. 